There we go. All right, I feel like I'm a little short, but hopefully you can hear me. That's the important part. Um, so good morning. Thanks for having me here today. Thanks for coming out of the break and hopefully got your stretches in and blood flowing. Um, as Ken said, I'm Shelby Busso. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer for the City of San Diego. Um, we're lucky enough in San Diego to also have a Chief Resilience Officer. She does exist. She's a real person. That's not me. Um, her name is Julia. Uh, she was hoping to be here today, so we were going to talk jointly about how we work together on resilience and mitigation um, issues, but then she got pulled away for some other work. So I'll just represent both of us and, um, and the City of San Diego and go through a little bit more uh, detail on our climate action plan and our adaptation plan that we call Climate Resilient SD. Um, both are integral as we leverage the monumental investments that we're making in infrastructure that you know, we've been talking about today. And I feel like a lot of the earlier panels were really getting into the details and I'll stay a little bit more high level about our city's approach in general to infrastructure investment um, as through that climate lens a little bit more. So, um, as you know, mitigation focuses on greenhouse gas emissions uh, reduction, and that's to, of course, avoid the potential, uh, sorry about that, uh, impacts of climate change. Um, this is really what our climate action plan addresses through measures such as reducing car travel, reducing energy use, and um, increasing our supply of renewable energy. Adaptation uh, focuses on planning for and adjusting to the environmental changes that are already underway. As much as I hate to admit it, um, we know that even if we stopped all of our emissions today, we would still experience impacts from climate change. Um, so that's why when we talk about adaptation, we're focusing on changing behaviors or systems to minimize these impacts. Um, and I think earlier we were talking about different definitions, so I'm covering mitigation. For those of y'all joining us, uh, adaptation and then resilience is even somewhat more distinct. Resilience is really, uh, as we defined it, our capacity to adapt, recover, and thrive within a changing climate. The distinction between uh, adaptation and resilience is often blurred, but it's important to note the differences. Um, adaptation is more directed towards preserving existing resources, in our opinion, while resilience includes the ability to emerge stronger, to not just bounce back, but to bounce forward. And that can be infrastructure-related, economics, um, or even social resilience as well. So climate resilient, SD is focused on preparing for, responding to, and recovering from climate change events, lowering the risk to climate change hazards, and increasing our capacity to bounce back or bounce forward, like I said, to climate change. Our climate action plan outlines the targeted mitigation measures that will focus primarily on greenhouse gas reduction. The area of overlap in this uh, Venn diagram here, it's that synergy, that synergy between them, um, many of our strategies can provide both climate resilience and climate mitigation benefits, which is why we work so closely together at the city of San Diego. Um, it's really only the way, the, the only way for both of us to succeed. Oh, yeah. All right, so cities, you know, we're famous for our plans, right? Um, we have a couple all the time. Um, you know, sometimes there's that risk that as we write new plans, um, they end up completely independent of each other. Maybe sometimes they even conflict. Uh, we wanted to make sure in San Diego that that didn't happen, so we made a very concerted effort to align our climate action plan and our climate resilient SD plan. So I'll touch on a couple of these synergies through, uh, through equity integration, some of our core benefits, and implementation after just going over a high-level overview of the plans themselves. We also co-branded, kind of a subtle detail, but um, helpful in our uh, city just for operations. We have monthly communications meetings with multi -depart multiple departments that are implementing different climate action or climate um, adaptation strategies, and we call it Our Climate, Our Future. Um, so that's, those meetings end up being a little bit more than even just a conversation about PR opportunities, but end up kind of sometimes being project management meetings as well. All right, so a little more detail about each plan. Um, I'll start with the Climate Action Plan, which is what my team manages for the most part. 
Um, we set an ambitious goal of net zero emissions by 2035. This plan, like the Resilient SD plan, was co-developed with community partners that have created an ongoing working group that we call our Climate Equity Working Group. We're very deliberate in the creation of this plan to take into account community needs, first and foremost. Um, one thing that we heard loud and clear was that this plan and all work across the city must support clean, uh, clean air and green jobs. Sometimes I'll just point out that when we talk about greenhouse gas emissions, that doesn't always take into account air quality. So we really specifically added a section on air quality to measure that. So it wasn't just a measurement of greenhouse gas emissions, but also air quality and improved health benefits to our constituents. Um, of course, you know, we also use our climate action plan to maintain our CEQA streamlining. In order to achieve net zero by 2035, we know it will take a combination of federal, state, local action. It can't just be us. Um, that top dotted line there is uh, what happens just kind of business as usual. Um, then there's a pretty wide uh, light blue wedge that accounts for the federal, state, regional actions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and we also need a lot more. Um, each colored wedge underneath there shows um, the projected greenhouse gas emissions reductions from each strategy in the cap. And then that green uh, kind of card at the bottom, I think is somewhat unique for a climate action plan to acknowledge that there's a lot that we don't know yet. There's a lot of innovation that's necessary and we've talked about partnership and that's where cities do need the private sector to step in and, and give us some opportunities for demonstration projects or to think a little bit outside of our normal operations because there's still a lot that we don't know how we're going to achieve uh, for true net zero greenhouse gas emissions. All right, so strategy one um, is, is the most impactful. Uh, this strategy aims to dramatically avoid greenhouse gas emissions from buildings across the city, and of course that also has that improved air quality impact. Um, this strategy includes three different measures. We're approaching this by first starting with our own building footprint, um, which is a commitment that we call ZEMBOP, it's our Zero Emissions Municipal Buildings and Operation Policy um, that sets a goal of zero emission buildings across the city. We're in our feasibility stage right now, but that's over 400 facilities that we are bringing down um, to net zero emissions. They will be all electric buildings as much as possible. Um, and then we're gonna look at the new building sector after that. We're drafting a REACH code right now. Um, and that will hopefully be released and approved by this summer, which is exciting. And then um, after that, we'll start our existing building roadmap. But again, our, our goals here on this slide are to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions primarily by the elimination of natural gas in our built environment. Um, strategy two is our access to clean and renewable energy. This maintains our city's commitment to 100% renewable energy and acknowledges that the pathway to achieve this target is through our partnership with San Diego Community Power. Um, this target remains one of the largest the city can achieve through greenhouse gas emissions. We are already committed to our own city, currently purchases 100% clean power, uh, but we wanna make sure that's accessible to everybody in the city as well. Um, we also, within this uh, strategy, set a more ambitious target for converting our city's fleet of vehicles to electric, and for the first time, uh, we aim to increase the number of electric vehicles used by our communities. We feel the city's role there is really to, of course, increase the um, charging capacity and infrastructure investment across the city. All right, um, strategy three, mobility and land use. Um, in San Diego, not like not unlike most cities, you know our largest emissions are from the transportation sector. So this one gets complicated. It's never going to be ultimately zero. So we have to be creative when we approach the mobility um, mobility targets that we've set. There are a lot of them, um, and we I guess we'll point out here that we updated our 50% mode sh shift target. Um, which previously accounted for resident commuters in transit priority areas only to all trips across all city areas accounting for our entire population and all parts of San Diego. All right, strategy four is our circular economy and clean communities. Um, the high level target here is a 90% waste diversion goal as well as methane capture from our landfill and wastewater treatment facilities. 
Strategy five is our resilient infrastructure and healthy ecosystems, um, which includes targets for restoration of salt marshlands for sequestration and increasing our local water supply through a little project you may have heard of called Pure Water. Um, we're maintaining our urban tree canopy goal as well, um, but we are updating our prioritization um, for tree planting efforts in what we call our communities of concern, which is uh, committing ourselves to plant 40,000 new trees in those neighborhoods by 2030. This is the goal where a lot of our um, resilient infrastructure goals live as well. So while the, the strategies listed are transformational, as I mentioned, there's still residual greenhouse gas emissions that we need to account for. Um, these emissions will exist after all measures that we are planning for have been implemented, and they'll need to be addressed to achieve our net zero goal. We will update the plan every five years, so hopefully we'll be able to start making a dent in this space. Climate Resilient SD is the city's first climate adaptation and resilience plan to increase local capacity to prepare for, adapt, recover from, and thrive in a changing climate. It was adopted by city council in December of 2021 with a commitment to again update this one also in five years. So there are four primary hazards for San Diego, um, increased wildfire risk, rising seas of course, um, increased heat wave frequency and intensity, and more variable precipitation, meaning, you know, as we're seeing more intense rain events and then longer periods of drought. Oh, sorry, I forget that they're not connected. Thank you. All right, um, so the five goals for Climate Resilient SD were developed with community feedback. Um, they set the overall vision for the plan and really understand what resilience looks like for the city. So first, we intend to ensure communities are connected and informed to be best prepared for climate change. Um, we will plan for and build a resilient and equitable city. Next, the plan aims to safeguard, preserve, and protect historic and tribal cultures from the effects of climate change. And of course, we'll support and prioritize thriving natural environments and enhance adapt ad adaptability. Um, so the plan will also strive to maintain and ensure minimal disruption to all critical city facilities and services in the face of climate change hazards. Okay, so the original point that I made on plan alignment, um, I'll start by addressing the overlapping core benefits provided by mitigation and adaptation. The suite of potential adaptation strategies included in the Climate Resilient SD plan will help the city to mitigate the risk to climate change. Many of these adaptation strategies go beyond risk mitigation to provide additional core benefits to the city and communities. So we identified the following core benefits. They're represented on, by the icons um, in the plan itself. They're equity, public health and safety, environmental, water quality, GHG mitigation, recreation, city services, and historic and tribal cultural resources. They help us to identify and prioritize our strategies to provide multiple benefits to the city and its residents. It's really important, um, the key that I just wanna get across is that we wanna plan holistically when it comes to climate and the need to address multiple issues alongside of each other. Um, so how, for example, how would we address flooding but also provide greenhouse gas emissions reduction benefits and implement the strategies in our communities of concern where the investments are needed the most. How, we can how can we provide grid resiliency, but also ensure that it's renewable and that the grid resiliency serves critical services in the time of emergency? And that's why we meet all the time. Um, but, and wanna also in, uh, include this focus on both plans centering climate equity. I won't go into this a lot, um, but if anybody wants to talk more about San Diego and how we define climate equity, um, we generally say it's to address historical inequities suffered by people of color, allowing everyone to fairly share the same benefits and burdens from climate solutions and attain full and equal access to opportunities regardless of one's background or identity. Um, we do this by defining what we call a climate equity index that has over 40 different indicators um, and then creates a score that can be layered depending on the needs assessment of the project um, and those that are moderate, low, or low, very low are defined as our communities of concern. It really only compares San Diego to San Diego, but it's been a helpful tool as we roll out projects and try to prioritize investments. All right. Um, I want to quickly get to the implementation because I know we're running a little short on time. 
So both plans have woven climate action adaptation and implementation into the very fiber of city operations. Um, we host monthly sustainability roundtables with identified liaisons in each department. Um, and they're not just liaisons who show up to a meeting, they are liaisons who are responsible for particular actions in either the Climate Resilience Plan or the Climate Action Plan. Um, and each implementing department has an annual work plan that's useful during the city's budget process. Um, and not only is it useful in them identifying project priorities, uh, but it aligns with the council's prioritization score and also lives on our website. So in a way, we're really holding ourselves accountable for this work. Um, we also did what we call a climate action implementation plan, which was a large, uh, a huge exercise that we underwent over the last six months to start identifying the cost of climate action um, and the cost of potential adaptation strategies and where they um, align. So uh, we've come up with some big numbers. None of us think that this is going to be an inexpensive inexpensive venture. Um, you know, it's something like $4 billion total over the next five years, but we've been able to assign those costs to each line. And we've also been able to say one of the biggest takeaways is a lot of this work is already happening in the city of San Diego. So this is not necessarily new investment. There may be an incremental change of about $30 million a year that we expect to need to identify funding for. But also, we're able to shift our current operations and work with staff to say, you need to do this project, you're already tasked with doing this project, but how can you do it just a little bit differently um, to both achieve some of our resilience and climate action goals? Um, we definitely have a long way to go, and we're iterating in this process. Um, but if you want to talk more about our implementation plan, we have lots of reports and number crunching, happy to go into more of the details of how we underwent that process because um, it's essentially a climate budget and something that will position us really well for upcoming funding opportunities. Um, so currently, like I said, you know, this work didn't stop while we were planning. Um, we, are, we do have over 50 actions in progress and 22 of those are complete and that's out of a total of about 190. Um, some of the examples up on, up on the screen are our mission, zero emissions building operations policy that I mentioned. Um, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention how we also updated our capital improvements project process that accounted for both equity and climate impact into the prioritization of capital improvement projects across the city. Um, and this summer, we're also seeing the installation of microgrids and, um, and we have some open calls right now for more EV infrastructure and, um, and building efficiency projects. So like I said too, um, I'm right, working right now mostly on our REACH code. Um, we will hopefully be heading down the path of eliminating natural gas and increasing energy efficiency in our new construction. Next fiscal year, we'll start our building uh, decarbonization roadmap. We've already started a building housing stock analysis, so we'll be um, really well prepared to go into that uh, roadmap process. And already residents in San Diego are starting to have access to recycling their organic waste. Um, and we're bringing more mobility options to everybody across the city. So our departments are really critical in this work. We don't take that for granted. It really can't just be sustainability mobility or just the planning department or, or just environmental services division. It really has to be everybody as a whole working together. And I think we're doing a decent job of that in San Diego. So um, I'm here for the rest of the day. Happy to talk to anybody else about some of the details. Sorry, it was pretty fast and high level, um, but that's my contact information if anybody wants to get a hold of me.